Welcome to CivilNet. My guest is Pawan Kumar Chandana. He's the co-founder and CEO of Skyroot, an Indian private aerospace manufacturer and commercial launch service provider. Mr. Chandana, thank you for joining us. So uh, first, could you please tell us more about the reason for your visit to Armenia? Yeah, so first of all, thanks, Ani, for uh, inviting me here. Uh, so the reason for my visit is one of our investors, uh, Mr. Razmek, you know, so he is of Armenian origin. You know, so he's based out of US, but he has an Armenian origin. Uh, and he said, like, you know, there's an event which is happening in my homeland. Uh, you know, it's just see if you're interested to, you know, meet the entrepreneurial community out, of here, out here. And uh, I just researched a bit about the Armenian uh, entrepreneurial ecosystem. And I felt like it's good to connect and, uh, uh, you know, so it's, I think, fantastic companies built by Armenian entrepreneurs. Uh, so I thought like it'll be a great opportunity to network and also like a good opportunity to come here and, you know, visit uh, an exotic land. Uh, so that's what interested me to come over here uh, and interact with the community here. Yeah. So uh, you are, as you said, from uh, India and your startup is the first Indian company to test fire multiple rocket propulsion systems. Uh, this is something pretty blurry for me. So could you please tell us more about that? Yeah, so, so what we do is like we build rockets which launch satellites to space. Now that's what a company does. So it's a multi-billion dollar uh, opportunity uh, for uh, uh, a company like us, you know, to launch satellites for probably, you know, 400 and 500 companies who build satellites across the world. Right. So uh, uh, from India, I think India is like one of the uh, leading space ecosystems, space tech uh, ecosystems across the world. Uh, and we are a company building, uh, you know, rockets or space systems out of India. Right. So for building these rockets, we need uh, there are propulsion systems which actually uh, are like the heart of these rockets, you know, which actually propel them to space. Right. So we have test fired like uh, a bunch of them last year. Uh, so, which as like a technology demonstration, uh, and these rockets will be launched starting next year commercially uh, to space and start launching satellites commercially, right? So that's what this is about. I mean, last year uh, you know we test fired these uh, engines, you know, these rocket engines successfully, and next year we plan to see the first uh, flight to space. Yeah, um, pretty amazing. <laughs> So millions of dollars were invested in your project and you want to raise around $40 million to, uh, to support satellite launch solutions in 2022 and uh, double your workforce. I think you want to pass to 180 workers. Um, your company is new as it was created in 2018, but it seems that the Indian government supports your work. Uh, so how do you do to convince uh, the investors to trust you? Yeah, so firstly, when we started off in 2018, uh, so there was no policy in India for private sector participants in the space uh, domain, right? But still with a leap of faith we started uh, and then like we are lucky enough to meet some really great entrepreneur uh, based out of India. So who are aware of this sector, who are aware of this technology uh, and uh, decide to invest in us. And then slowly the government itself has opened up the sector and creating more awareness among more investors. So that will have the government support and also we building a unique solution and I was also from the uh, you know Indian Space Research Organization before I worked for the government before. Uh, so who has like good expertise in the tech. So that gave comfort to the investors to put in a lot of money in it. And also like it's the first time in India you know so we're developing rockets from the private sector point of view which has like very large uh, market uh, across the world. Right. So it is a great uh, investment opportunity. The government is, uh, uh, you know, helping us. The government is supporting us, uh, and also like, uh, and also like, uh, they trusted in the capabilities with the founding team. You know, me and my co-founder Bharat, you know, who worked for the government before, uh, building good capabilities in uh, building the tech which we are building. Uh, so all these things helped in uh, creating investor comfort, uh, which increased, which uh, helped them create this kind of investment in the company. Uh, and India ranks actually third among the most attractive investment destination for technology transactions uh, in the world. And at rank 46, India is among, stands among the, most fifth, uh, the, the top 50 countries in the Global Innovation Index. There are 132 economies uh, that were ranked. So did modern uh, India realize that science and development are keys for economic growth? Yes, absolutely. In fact, like when India got independence in 1947, one of the first thing which the government has done is like they started the Indian Institute of Technologies. 
you know so they are like one of the top premier institutes across the world uh, you know providing a lot of uh, you know engineering education across india uh, and uh, so that is one good step uh, and also like a lot of investments have hap happened in creating research institutes uh, you know and a lot of engineering companies started uh, you know coming to india etc etc so there's a lot of stem uh, education happening in india uh, in fact like indian workforce powered most of the it industry across the world you know so a lot of software engineers come from india uh, so this started from after the post independence when the government realized that uh, it is the backbone of uh, you know building a great economy going forward which really helped today and even for example i am in the space sector you know we cannot imagine uh, a country like india 1950s and uh, 1960s starting a space program but we did you know at that point of time imagining that is going to become big uh, later on and also it will help a lot of people and now it's like indian space uh research organizations like one of the leading in the world you know so we're up shoulders with the us and china you know all the top leading uh, players in even deep tech uh, uh, ventures like you know the space right so that way like uh, early uh, vision uh, for investing uh, into uh, science and technology education in the country uh, has led to this transformation yeah a lot of uh, countries uh, get reached because of uh, the raw materials they had or they exploit raw materials and resources in other countries and uh, now it seems that uh, science and technology science and development technologies are became the new resources uh, of enrichment of wealth what do you think about that is absolutely, it absolutely absolutely true you know because in fact like i am a living example of that you know so we are able to build a company generate a lot of uh, you know employment and i've seen i see a lot of uh, companies entrepreneurs governments in india you know so a lot of wealth of science and technology uh, being the base foundation base for all that development and uh, so absolutely you know what you say i think that is the raw material of the future you know, so yeah so that's something that it seems that in the case of armenia we did not understand correctly that fact because our country uh, in the same um, index uh, dropped eight notches uh, to the 69th position there are few investments also uh, done in the science and development sector and we notice a uh, brain drain so it means that scientists engineers and other software uh, hardware it uh, specialists are leaving the country for more welcoming countries mostly uh, western states so since you are in the field of science and development and technologies in your opinion what should armenia do to keep its brains within the country yeah so i think first thing uh, armenia should do is like increase awareness among the youth you know so among since the schooling days itself uh, all the people i mean the students should be given a good awareness uh, about the tech you know what it can do to you and how to have a great career in it and also start building the infrastructure in the form of universities so that people study here and stay here and also invite like several companies to come to armenia you know so when there is a workforce you know create an awareness so that you know companies come and establish their centers here maybe r and d centers maybe like you know for example in fact i was surprised to see a lot of great startups uh, set up centers here you know that is because their founders are from armenia they know uh, you know there is a capability here and because they have that awareness they created the centers right so increasing the awareness so that you know people know to create companies here there is some good advantage uh, so so all these three all these three factors which are told here together i think will uh, create uh, the uh, i mean uh, the kind of change which we want one thing is from the beginning Uh, from school that awareness should be created among the students uh, about science and technology the benefits it's going to bring and number 2 is create infrastructure in the country and number 3 is to uh, uh, you know uh, increase more awareness among external companies outside of armenia to set up uh, their uh, centers here so all these three together can create that ecosystem uh, which will retain and sustain for a long period of time in armenia Yeah. So private sector is actually private companies are working on this direction the the the, the examples you just gave actually are made by private uh, companies do you think that uh, in this case the government the armenian government should be more involved and um, take more um, stronger actions in this process yeah i think even the same transformation is happening in india as well so what the government should do best is allow the private companies to do at their best you know that should be their job you know motive so that's what the indian government is doing today so what they're doing is they're creating enabling policies creating awareness doing everything to see that private companies operate at their best you know so that's what the government uh, you know is set its aim to do you know so otherwise it becomes a bottleneck uh, you know so a lot of paperwork red tape comes into picture so that's what i think should happen even in armenia where the government does all the promotion gives has all the regulation policies in place such that a private sector can flourish mm -hmm. well yeah. thank you
uh, you. very much for this talk, Mr. Chandana. Thank you for watching and continue to follow CivilNet.